I'm logged into the root account and on the main Amazon Web Services page. We are going to create a group and set the policies needed for working with a repository. So from here I'm going to, to click on the All Services link and scroll down until I find the Security, Identity, and Compliance section. And I'm going to select the IAM link. From this page I'm going to select the Groups option from the navigation panel on the left. Just click on Groups. And this will bring us to the page that lists all our existing groups. And as you can see, I don't have any groups yet. I, and I think I'll set up two groups. The first group will be for my personal account. I'm going to give myself greater access in order to manage user access to the repository. And I'm going to set up a second group with everything a team of programmers would need in order to work with the repository. So let's start with creating a group for our personal accounts. Click on the Create New Group button at the top. And then in by group name there, give yourself a meaningful group name. Hopefully better than mine, but I'm just doing this for test purposes. And once you've done that, at the bottom right, click on the next step. For our groups to be useful, we will need to attach policies to them. I'm going to use the existing policies that Amazon Web Services provides for us. These existing policies are configured to meet our needs, and this not only makes it quicker and easier to set up the group, but it's also safer too. However, as you can see, there are a lot of policies to choose from now. Fortunately, there's this filter here at the top that makes it considerably easier to find what we're looking for, provided, of course, you know what you're looking for. So I'm going to search for code commit because that is the name of the Amazon source control services we're using. And I'm going to give myself the power user access policy. The power user policy will give anyone in this group nearly complete access to the repository. In addition, for the admin account, I also want to attach policies that will give me the ability to manage user accounts. And these policies are listed under IAM. So I'm going to type that in. And that lists all the IAM policies. And I'm looking for the SSH keys, the managed service specific credentials, and the read only access. Now you can create your own policies if you want to, and you can even modify the existing policies, which is a great way to get started. However, depending on who the users are, you should only provide them with the policies they need for what they will be doing. So once we have our policies attached, just click on the next button down the bottom right. Finally, we just need to review the group settings before we create it. No typos in the group name. It appears we have all the policies we will need. Of course, we can adjust this later if we need to. If you aren't certain, it's probably better to be a little more restrictive at first and add what you need later. If it looks good, go ahead and click on the Create Group button at the bottom right. I have my test group set up for my account for administrative purposes. Now I'm going to quickly create a second group for the programmers. They just need access to the repository. And I'm going to give them power user access because that gives them nearly complete access. The only thing they can't do with that policy is delete the repository and I'd rather they didn't delete the repository. It's that simple. There I go. I have both my groups created and the next step will be to create the user accounts. Click on the users link in the navigation panel on the left. Right there. This will take us to the users page 
and this page is going to list all of our users and as you can see I have no users I'm going to start with creating a user account for my use I'm doing this so I can connect to the repository without using the root account so at the top of the page there click on the add user then type in a meaningful unique name hopefully better than the one I'm using for test purposes then click on the programmatic access box down below for any other users that would probably be good enough but I'm also going to check off the other box the Amazon Web Services Management Console access because I'm going to use the new account to set up the repository and I'm going to do that by logging in directly to the console uh, and because I'm going to do that for this account I'm going to set up a password typically I wouldn't worry about this for the other accounts but I am for this because I'm going to use it this is going to be temporary I'm not going to keep it if I was setting this up for somebody else I would definitely want to auto generate the password and I would want to require them to reset the password when they log in once you've done that if you've done that click on the next permissions button at the bottom right and this is where we're going to attach the permissions the policies to our user by using those groups we created so if you scroll down a little bit you can see our groups and this is for my account the admin account so select whichever group applies to this user that you've created and then click on the next review button at the bottom right so I've got my new users and I have it set up with programmatic access no reset that all looks good if yours looks good click on the create user button at the bottom right there it is I have a new user account now the first thing I should do is click on the download CSV button this file has all the information on the new account that I'm going to need to log in you want to make sure you store that file someplace safe and if it's for someone else you'll need to send them a copy I'm gonna take a look at this real quick here it is a little hard to read let's let's expand this a little so some of this information will be useful for me I'm going to log into the console and you may notice that this information is right here as well let's see here's my console login URL and they'll need their username oh, new user and they'll need their password which I already set that up once again store that someplace safe don't show it to anybody <laughs> um, I'm gonna get rid of it so it doesn't matter and once it's safely stored I'm gonna log out I'm gonna log out of the console and log into the new account I'm gonna go to that URL log in with the new user account 